Good morning. All right, if I can invite everyone to take your seats. All right, we're going to start this quick time. So if everyone can please stand up, I'll quickly pray for worship and we'll just get started. Okay. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful day, actually. Um, God, I pray for those who are still arriving, that they'll make it here safely. I pray that you will take our worship and our praise as an offering to you, and that we can be able to open our hearts and ears to those who are sharing today. I pray that you impact us through um, our sermon as well. And yeah, we lift this day to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You couldn't escape, but he came and he died and he rose. Those chants are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way, but he came and he died. Those giants are dead now. And this is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He paid the cross, beat the grave. The heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. The fear that took our breath away Faith so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness Tell the story of his faithfulness Jesus, he 
bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus.
For today, thank you for the sun, thank you for the weather, thank you that you brought all these people here to hear the testimonies of of Calvin, Celine, Josiah, Stephen, and Kartik. Let their stories speak to who you are, and let people that maybe don't know you yet get to know you. And so I lift this day up to you in this baptism and this service. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get seated. I'm just going to quickly pray, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start, okay? So let's pray. Uh, God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Uh, thank you that we're about to witness um, baptisms and the testimonies of these people who have decided to follow you. 
And God, we're excited to do that. And God, as we enter into your word today, I pray you speak through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I've been watching this show. As you know, I love watching TV shows. Uh, I've been watching the show called Yellowstone. It's about a family that owns the largest ranch in Montana. But you wouldn't think there's a lot of drama with this show, but there is. There's so, many, so much drama. There's drama with the bordering indigenous reservation. There's drama with developers that are trying to build on their land. So sometimes when you think about a ranch, you're only thinking about horses, you know, taking care of cattle. But for this ranch, they take things seriously. They take it really seriously. That they have this custom. They have this custom, this ritual, where they would brand their workers. So not just branding cattle, they're branding their workers. They would get a branding iron, they would sear it to like the hottest temperatures, and they would imprint this Y on your chest. The branding was symbolic a physical testament of loyalty, of belonging to this ranch. And if you betrayed that loyalty, the consequences would be severe. In one ep, they caught one of their members stealing from the ranch. So what they did was they got him and they cut off, they got this knife and they cut off that brand off his chest, signifying that he no longer belongs to the ranch. It was pretty scary, pretty interesting rituals. I know some people look at the church, they look at baptism, they look at all the rituals that we do, and some may think, well, this is weird. This is cultish, even. But there's a reason behind our rituals. There's a reason, a meaning that when people make a lifelong commitment to God, a commitment to the church, it's supposed to be done with a clear mind. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25 to 33, Jesus goes on and he talks about how everyone has to count the cost. That before you follow Jesus, you have to count the cost. You have to figure this out. Like no one's doing this blindly. No one's doing this with pressure on them. Every person, every church is supposed to think hard about this. Is following Jesus the best life for them? So in just a few minutes, we're going to see this ritual called baptism where five people, I think five, yes, five people are going to make a public, okay, a public commitment to Jesus. But first it helps us to understand what baptism is is about. So our Bible story today is about the meaning of baptism. So if you want to read with me, open your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. If you do not have your Bibles, it will be up on the screen so you can read with us. So Mark chapter 4, verse, Mark chapter 1, verse 4 to 8, this is what it says. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside And all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of those whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Based on this passage, baptism is a symbol that helps us understand our relationship with God, that this relationship has two sides. It's our side, and then we have God's side. So first I want to talk about what we, as a people, what part we play in our relationship with God. That our part is to trust God in a practical way. So our Bible story, it introduces a guy named John. He lived in the wilderness. John is a prophet, it says. And this means that God has given him a message, 
a special message to share to everyone. Many people, they recognize. They recognize John as a prophet, so they go out to see him. They go out in droves and crowds to see him. They would meet him out in the wilderness. And he would baptize people. He would dunk people completely, okay? Completely into the water, immersion style. And he would bring them out. That this dunking, this dunking motion was a symbol. A symbol of leaving their sin behind. That these people who are now dumped, they were now committed. They are now committed to doing the things, doing things the right way. And they would trust that God would wipe the, clean, wipe the slate clean. He would forgive them, forgive them for all their sins. That if we want a relationship with God, we do the same thing that these people do. That we can meet God and hear God's words. It's usually at a church, you know, what we're doing right now. Usually. And we're confronted with our sin, everything that's gone wrong in our lives, all the wrong attitudes, all the wrong habits that we have. And we come to this place where we confess these sins to God. And we trust in God's goodness. We trust that God will forgive us. Even people who have been Christians for a long time. Some of you here have been Christians for a long time. You've done this before. You've done this before, maybe years ago. It's always a good habit, daily habit, of going to God when we fail, bringing our true selves to God when we sin, when we don't do right. And some of us have neglected that habit. We have not come clean to God. We're hiding from Him. But when we reveal our true selves to God, God accepts us and He will do His part which leads us to my next point. God's part is to forgive and transform us. I watched this movie one time a few years ago, maybe, maybe 10 years ago. It was called American History X. Should I ask if people have watched this movie? Because no one ever watches it. It's a really good movie, okay? Really, really good story. The film follows two racist brothers, Derek and Danny. Now, Derek is played by Edward Norton right here. Derek starts and becomes a leader of a violent white supremacist neo-Nazi group. Ironically, they're called DOC, which means Disciples of Christ. That's what they're called. That's like the name of my youth group, okay? Like, you're like, what? One day, Derek finds himself in a fight with two people. The two people are trying to steal his car, and he kills both of them ruthlessly. One of them, he like curbs, thumps them in the in the face. It was, it was pretty crazy. So he gets caught. He goes to jail, okay? He goes to jail for, I think, for three years. But when Derek is in jail, he befriends a black inmate named Lamont. Now, this friendship had this huge impact on him. This friendship, and then his experience in jail, he started to become disenchanted with his old group, his old way of life that it significantly changes him, it changes his perspective, so that when he get, comes out of jail, he's not the same person anymore. He's different. He's so different that he doesn't want anything to do with his old life. His old friends, you know, his brother, they see this as a betrayal. So for the whole movie, Derek, tries to persuade his brother and whoever wants to hear to leave, leave this lifestyle, leave this gang, leave this way of life. And when we see it, Derek becomes a new person. And I bring this movie up because that's what should happen to every Christian that meets God. They change, they transform, they can't be the same again. They're different. They're a new person. John said to the crowds in verse 8, he says, I baptize you with water, but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is what it meant. John only had the power to dunk people in the water. So when I baptize people, that's, that's the only thing I could do. I, that, that's it. Okay, like I don't, there's no power that comes out of me. But it's Jesus. 
Jesus, who had the power to dunk a person into the Holy Spirit. The water was just a symbol for the Holy Spirit. So when the water completely surrounded a person when they get baptized, in the same way, the Holy Spirit surrounds a person. So you see the symbolism of it. The Holy Spirit surrounds a person completely when they trust in God. From that moment, the Holy Spirit comes to live with us, transforms us, transforms our lives. This is what we celebrate today. This is why everyone cheers, okay? When, you, when the person goes in and goes out, we're like, woo, okay? It's this transformation. God has washed away their sins. He's given them a new life. They're different now. So what we're going to do right now, that it's time to hear their stories, okay? And this is my most exciting part. I love this part. So we're going to hear their stories, and then afterwards... Yeah, we're, I'm not going to do any dunk. I can't dunk in this, but we're going to immerse them in water. So, Tim. Um, you know I like a really good deal, okay? And uh, baptisms are a really good deal. So think of a wedding, how exciting weddings are. Today, there's like five people committing. So it's like a wedding, but times five. And in a wedding, you kind of commit to like another flawed human being. For baptisms, you commit to God, okay? So this is like a, a super deal, right? Uh, there's one story that really sticks in my head, but um, it's this man who's saying, my wife has been with five guys since I got married. Whoa. All of them have been me. He's changing. We all change, right? The only thing that's kept us together is the vows I've made on my baptism day to God and the vows I made on my wedding day. Now, which one is stronger? I'd say the ones you make on your baptism day, right? So... Uh, today, as we get to hear the stories, um, take it in. See how it affects you. See what it means to you. Uh, let it change the way you see life. Let it change your story. So first off, we have Stephen. Yay. <laughs> now, uh, my, uh, my first memory of Stephen is I picked him up from his house. And you know, like, you're supposed to sit shotgun. He sits in the back. And I'm like, how are you? And he doesn't respond. So that's, he's grown so much. It's been a privilege just seeing you grow and see how God has been working in you. So can you share us your story? Um, hello. My name is Stephen. Growing up, my mom was Christian, and my dad was atheist. And along with many other reasons, they would constantly argue. My father also had anger issues, and his uncontrollable actions towards my family and I played a vital part in how I viewed the world. Despite the constant conflict within our household, amidst the chaos, they could agree on one thing. Good grades, good school, good job. With six words, they gave me their answer to life, to which I completely rejected. I did not have a good impression of them, so I abandoned their notion. I ended up harboring resentment and bitterness towards them and towards all of life as well. From ages six to 14, I was attending this thing called school. Quick explanation for those who don't know school. Well, it's a place where you go to class, study to achieve good grades, have some fun. No, 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 no. This is what school actually is. It's power, influence, and money. This is what most of my classmates sought after. It was their purpose in life. I looked at this and thought, so insignificant, and I didn't want any part of it. I never tried to understand them, so I was pretty much isolated for all of school. Aside from the school part, there was a life in church. In elementary, my mom brought me to Foothills Alliance Church. This was my first exposure to Christianity. I attended most Sundays as well as their youth group in the upcoming years. And in grade nine, some individual named Connor invited me to Zoe, the youth group in this church. The main thing I took away from all of church was I don't need God. An atheist or an agnostic could live life just fine, surely. I just came to church to have fun. Once I was in high school, I was now in complete isolation from people from school. Life speaking questions began to really sink in. The thoughts branched out endlessly, and I couldn't find a solution except for F the world. Who cares what happens? The values my classmates saw in school was just a smaller scale version of first world society. I really struggled to see the value of human life. 
it all seemed like such an accident, and we're all just meant to have some fun and then just die. At grade 12, I turned to escape through video games. The way you progressed in games felt like I was achieving something useful, when I really wasn't. My grades ended up dropping, and my acceptance to UFC was revoked. During my fourth gap year, I had a lot of time to on my hands to reflect. Some part of me always wanted to do the right thing. My current way of life had no answer, so I had to be more open-minded and go against my stubborn self. I was invited to join a young adults group, so I decided, why not? Every Wednesday, I would carpool with Tim, leader of our group, and with back and forth car rides and conversation about Christianity, I was slowly being hooked in. Something eye-opening he told me was, if there's no God, then we're no better than animals. I completely agreed. All of life only has value if it was intentionally and carefully created. Throughout young adults, people would pour out some of their problems, things they were struggling with, and it was extremely difficult to empathize. One of the books we read, Try Softer, it's a great book, you should read it, emphasized on the ability to connect with others and yourself. With readings and discussion of this book, I was, able, I was able to conclude, no matter what background you were born in, your upbringings, likely out of your control, define who you are and justifies how you act and think. Knowing this, I began to slowly understand others as well as myself. Where I once thought humans were all worthless, I slowly began just to see how valuable we really are. We are all handcrafted by God. All of our experiences are God-given, and that gives us so much value. As young adults went on, the warmth I'm experienced within the group was rooted in a profound love, one that came from Jesus. Closer to the end of my gap year, my a clear life, a clear path in life began to sprout. And for the first time in my life, I felt an irreplaceable feeling of optimism. After going weekly to young adults and church, I was sold on Christianity, knowing there was a God who created everything and unconditionally loved us, giving us value to all life. I had to choose him. In the, U in the end, UFC rejected me again, so I was off to U of A. I lived in residence for my first year of uni, and let's just say it was a blast. Sure, the events, games, Northern Lights, they're all great, but what really stood out to me was hearing people's stories. The sheer amount of diversity there was, hearing what they missed from their hometown, their memories, their experience, how it shaped who they were, is just such a blessing. Seeing more of God's creations and his handiwork firsthand was truly beautiful. Proverbs 19.21. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. As I reflect on my journey, I stand reaffirmed in my newfound purpose, to live a life that glorifies God, to serve and love others with compassion. I think there was a time when I saw people as worthless, and now they bring so much joy, value, and meaning in my life. Where there was once no purpose in life, there is now a light at the end of the tunnel. For the people listening, if you're uncertain on your path, I pray that you find it, just as God helped me find mine. And for the ones who already know, I encourage you to keep going, for he is always here with us. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Stephen. He's so different. It's awesome. Okay. Um, next up, we have Celine. Here, can we welcome up Celine? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Share us your story and um, how God's been working in your life. Thanks. Wow. Okay. Um, so I'm Celine. Um, <laughs> I was born in a Christian household. But to me, I never really had that faith. I was more like a labeled Christian. Because it was like more of my parents' beliefs and they kind of just like forced it on us. 
like me and my three brothers, like they always like, oh, wake up exactly 8.30 and then we leave and then we have to go to church and be there at 11 or something, I don't know. It was like a bore and it felt like a chore and I didn't like it. Um, so my parents, they always tried to encourage me to go to church, but to me it felt like they were hating on me and really crapping on me for every little thing that I did and would say and would wear. And um, they would always just try to like, try to reason their argument, saying that this is for God and, you know, just suck it up. Anyways, um, I was always hesitant about Christianity because to me it was all words and I didn't have any evidence. And even though I, I could have searched for it and I could have asked and reached out to people, I didn't. So my bad. Um, okay. I, I had this uncle of mine, sorry, uh, he was like my best friend, he was my, sorry, long story short, when he was here, he was not a Christian, and he would always challenge me and make me doubt my faith. He would always ask, like, if God is real, then why is there poverty, and why is there just so many bad people in this world? And I never knew how to answer him, and all I ever said was, I just believe. Um, he died. Uh, he died, and when he did, I felt so lost, and I felt like I didn't know what to do. Yeah. All right. I didn't have any answers to life. And while I was lost, I had two really amazing people in my life who helped me get through it. One was Logan, who kept encouraging me by asking questions about faith, and he was curious, and it made me want to learn more just so I could spread the word to him and others. So thank you. Um, another was Anita. She was always there for me through a lot of my pain and my healing, and she was always pushing me to be better. And for that, I'm very, very grateful for her. <laughs> um, they pushed me towards God. And eventually, earlier this year, I came closer to Zoe. And by giving it a second chance, a lot of the people in Zoe encouraged me to start going to YAM, which is our young adults group. Anyways. Um, so recently, I attended YAMP, and I saw and experienced for myself the love and joy and vulnerability that everyone had for one another, and it was really beautiful to me. And there was a unity and trust that went beyond just good friends. I believed it was God's love he was tapping into and then expressing for the rest of us. God's love can be felt, not just known. And this was kind of like my, miss, my missing puzzle piece to seeing that God is real and God is good. And his goodness is known and known in, is made known by those who follow him. Okay, and I want to be one of those followers. Um, someone committed to his way. Anyways, I know I'm not the perfect Christian. I know I'm flawed, and I probably won't be perfect for the rest of my life, but I will be, what? As God sees me through Jesus, he sees as perfect. So I want to continue to grow my faith and follow in his ways, and I may become the person that he made me to be the Celine that looks most like Jesus. 
Thanks. Thank you, Celine. Um, okay, if all of YouTube's wisdom of um, health and like positive vibes was a person, that would be Kartik. Kartik's coming up to share next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Share us your story. Uh, my lips are dry. My bad. Okay. All right. Hey guys. So. Some of you, you know, you probably heard my story. Uh, some of you probably have it. But so my name is Kartik, and I'm your borderline average guy who's super healthy and productive, kind of mysterious, calm, confident, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> you know, I try to self improve and grow seven days. Allegedly. If you haven't met or seen me, you know, it's kind of easy to tell me apart from, you know, Everyone here, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I've been coming to LCC for almost a year now, and I'm grateful, you know, I was invited to church. And y'all are so incredible, you know? My, my cup is always full when I'm here with the community, so I'm honored. I'm honored to be up here to declare my full commitment to Christ. So I became a Christian from Hinduism five years ago. My brother and his friend shared the gospel with me. I used it as a way to disobey my parents. I was a labeled Christian for the first two and a half years. I thought it was cool and aesthetic, wearing a cross earring and nonchalantly saying, it is what it is, God got me, aha, while like, flexing my abdomen. <laughs> but it was just me being an unbeliever. Not showing up to my emotions and running from them, I lived in autopilot. Uh, like, what is any level of self-awareness or faith when I could just make money and have hearty eyes? Chasing treasures of the world, addicted to feeling highs, I wanted to be seen and be better than everyone. I didn't want to obey anything but myself. I was definitely not a good kid, <laughs> but I enjoyed my life. It felt good. The praise, the secular dreams, being emotionless and getting what I want, but every time it would end, I was left empty. Even worse than what I was before I was chasing these feelings. My whole life built on a rotten root that kept growing inwards and not outwards. But then uh, my older brother, he went through uh, extremely tough time in his life. Two years ago, you know, I, I looked up to his influence. He was, he was kind of the security that let me to enjoy these worldly things without thinking of the future. After seeing someone who I loved to go through so much pain, I got scared. I was numb. I hated what was in front of me. And I just, I couldn't look up to him anymore because all of a sudden there was all this weight on my shoulders. And there I was, floating in the dark by myself. I felt like lean on. And there, God met me again. And I, have, I prayed to God for the first time that night in my life, out of guilt and shame, apologizing about my whole character, asking how or what to change in my life, what to do now. And then I carried on to the next day. But this time, I, I felt his presence. And slowly, just through the next two years, I started meeting him often through the days. At first, through watching these videos where people pray for you, and I would just have a small s smile, or kind of just saying that I'm blessed, and giving thanks, showing gratitude in the morning. But consistently following him, it was, it was tough. It felt more of like a self-improvement, mindfulness practice to me. But his presence, it was definitely stronger. And his name was intentionally in my heart now. My friends, they would actually see me and be like, ha, you're Christian. And I'd be like, yeah, I am a Christian. <laughs> but during last summer, you know, my good friend, Halina, you know, she's not here right now, but shout out Halina, invited me to a barbecue at church. And here I was at LCC for the first time. And here God really started cooking. <laughs> 
I met Joe at the door, who I knew through my family, kind of. <laughs> family. <laughs> and I felt comfortable seeing him. Everyone welcomed me with such grace, interest, and intention. I went home feeling really warm, but a bit curious as well about the genuinity of the people I just met. Like, wow, how can so many people at the same time be so intentional talking with me? And then I started coming more routinely, kind of being really excited for Sundays. Then shortly after, I joined Tuesday Yam, you know, young, young adults club. Yeah. It felt like a safe place, connecting with people at a level that let me be myself and still love God. <clears throat> Slowly in this process, Tuesday and Sundays would be my favorite days of the week. And I started to have a drive to build these full loving relationships where it's built on truth and not on who has what and who's better, but built on love and acceptance. Seeing these events unfold, I could clearly see how God was working in me. His presence, it's so illuminated now. He's become my life. And I want to grow in his garden now. I want to give everything I have, every little to big aspect of my life, my family, my friends, my work, my hobbies to God and his beautiful kingdom, the way he gave it to me. I, okay, now, now, now that you all know me a bit, I'll, like, I'll reintroduce myself. You know. I'm Kartik. I like going on long walks in nature with the people I love. I love admiring the sky. I'm really anxious. I try to embrace reality every day, and also that I lose. I lose all the time, but God doesn't. So my cup is full. My heart, this non-accidental being, this life God gifted me is so full at peace. He is so good, and I'm so grateful I get to know him. I'm so grateful he wants to know the people around me. Let him be the one purpose to my life. <laughs> My confidence in him, his will, my faith, it will never fail because this is the best reality he created. So every decision he makes, it must be the ultimate, most loving decision ever made for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Kartik. This is all I am, all God made me, and I want to commit my existence to him and follow him for eternity. Aha. All right, thanks for getting me, love <laughs> That was awesome. I think a rap almost. That was awesome. Um, next up, we have Calvin. Can we welcome up Calvin? So um, there's someone in our group, our small group, that always calls Cal Calvin a scammer. Uh, just, you know. But kind of makes sense, because scams are things that are too good to be true, and just the way you came into our lives is just too good to be true. So share your story. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. Wagwan, y'all. My name is Calvin, and I'm 22 years old. Uh, sometime in February this year, Joseph Nguyen uh, invited me to LCC. And ever since then, uh, LCC has become my home church. I did not grow up as a Christian. My family and I were not religious at all. We're, we were labeled Buddhists, except for my grandma, who took and practiced religion very seriously. Although I was just a labeled Buddhist and never did things a Buddhist would do, and would often skip going to the temple when my grandma asked me to go, I've always believed that there was a God in heaven. Maybe there's just some person floating around in the clouds, just watching and judging us all, tallying up everyone's good and bad deeds, and then handing out good and bad karma when the timing is most convenient or when it's most inconvenient. But to whoever God was, I've always prayed and tried to talk to God, but I would have never guessed it was Jesus all along. For as long as I remember, Christianity was almost like an ick to me. There are so many rules to follow. Christianity wasn't popular with my friends. There were countless times when I encountered extremist Christians with a hot mic on the streets of downtown Calgary, just screaming and holding up signs, you're all going to hell if you don't believe in Jesus. People trying to force an ideology or a religion onto me, non-consensually. All of that was pretty off-putting. For a while, I was pretty closed off whenever the topic of Christianity was brought up. I didn't want to talk about it, but I remember about a year ago, me and my friends were yapping and eating McDonald's at a car meet, and for some reason, my friend Jap 
brought up Christianity. Well, she asked me what my thoughts were on it. I then went on a rant on those extremist Christians with the hot mics, and I asked her, why did you, how did this conversation get here? And she replied with something about how important Christianity is to her. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But then the thing <laughs> that really stuck out to me, uh, the thing that really stuck out to me was when she said, I talk to everyone about how good Christianity and Jesus is. And it's like planting a seed in everyone. If that seed grows into a flower, then awesome. But if it doesn't, then it's cool too. And that, my friends, is how my Christian arc began. Look, I don't believe in coincidence, co coincidences. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and ever since that chat with Jap, I got invitations to different churches. My new closest friends were Christians. My friends gifted me a Bible. Joseph invited me to LCC and the Yam Book Club. And now I'm just standing here about to get married to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It's, all, it's like all of these things just perfectly lined up as the God in, of the Bible's way of saying, yo, I'm real, and I'm the one you've been praying to. God has been so good to me through, uh, through so many things. The biggest one is friendship. Now that I have a bunch of Christian friends, I think they're some of the greatest people. They're the kindest, funniest, and most hardworking people I know. And to think that they're like this because of Jesus blows my mind. I remember thinking to myself, yo, these Christian people are exactly the type of people my parents would be proud of and want me to hang around with. But on top of the community, I remember researching religions. I looked through Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, and, and because of this growing influence in my life, Christianity, and a lot of and of combined, here I am about to com commit my life to Jesus. I want to end off with something that happened a few years ago. My mom had to go through a pretty serious surgery. And I remember when I was crying in, in my room the day before, I was super scared and lost. I prayed out to the unknown God in the sky that she had a good surgery. And she came out of the surgery with zero complications and a quick recovery. God answered that prayer. And now there is a second thing I prayed for during that time. I prayed for a network, a community of like-minded people. And it took God a lot longer than the surgery, but I can look out right now and confidently say he's answered that prayer as well. Jap, I think it's safe to say that that McDonald's talk that we had, your seed grew into a Christian tree. And thank you for that. I want to, yeah. hallelujah. I also want to thank uh, Angad for being, uh, also for planting that seed as well. I want to thank Joseph for watering and bringing sunlight to the plant. I want to thank the LCC community and shout out to Pastor Tim for continuing to pour into me and eventually harvest what God has been doing. Above it all, I want to thank God for working behind all of that and being there for me for my whole life. Before I even knew it, it was the Christian God. Yahweh. Okay, the last one. Um, doesn't need an intro. I named my son after him, so that's enough said. Josiah, can you come up and share your story? What's up, guys? Um, I'm Josiah. Um, I like long walks on the beach. Oh, shoot. Uh, and I'm 15 years old. Um, if you don't know me, that's okay, because you might have heard one of my nicknames, like, um, is that your cousin? Or if you're an old head, you might remember me as Joe B or B. Um, and my personal favorite nickname is, oh, you're Sam and I's little brother, Sam and Eli's little brother. And if you really knew me back then, you may remember me as the iPad kid. Um, but jokes aside, God's been working through my life, through so many experiences and relationships, and I'm very excited to share share that with you all today. Uh, my, story's, my story starts when I was born. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, some of you guys may have even held me in your hands when I was a baby. Or maybe that was just Sam Lamb. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but from when I could first think, I remember all my memories being here. Church was where I went to have fun uh, with my friends. And it was always church on Sundays and kids club on Fridays. 
uh, which was really fun. And in terms of my faith, I thought I was a pretty strong Christian, or at least for my age, which was like 10. So um, the criteria for that is like know all the books in the Bible in order, know John 6, 3, 3, John 3.16 by heart, and I was a pretty try-hard sweat during VBS. I used to get like all the gems and stuff like that. And, um, and I really enjoyed it um, up until COVID hit. And I feel like we all know where this goes, right? No real life interactions, infinite free time. It really threw me a rut with, with my faith. And it doesn't help that I gamed all day and all night. I played a little game called Call of Duty Warzone um, for like hours on end. And if you remember those gaming, sh or if you remember those funny shirts that say like, eat, sleep, blank, repeat, replace blank with gaming. And that was pretty much my life. Um, and it was very rough. My faith was the worst it ever was. I was going through puberty, and whatever my parents told me to do, uh, I just wanted to do the opposite. So I hated going to church because um, my parents just nagged me on so much. And I always had the excuse of, if service is just online, why can't I just watch it online if it's just digital anyways? Um, even though I knew if I went, I knew if I stayed at home, I'd probably watch the service while half asleep or just on the games. Um, and a bunch of little situations like these like built up and I eventually hated anything to do with God. And it was like this for like almost like two years. And then one day during the summer of 2021, God, he, he was doing something. Um, some dude, I don't know if you know him, his name is Nathan Dang. He's right there. Um, after, after a Sunday service, he invited me to go to Blaze Pizza with uh, some other Zoe kids at the time. And Zoe is just, um, it's like a youth group for our church. So when I say Zoe, I don't mean like a girl. It's like, it's like a church. Um, but that was really fun. And I enjoyed it, enjoyed it, enjoyed it a lot. Um, another guy you may know as Jason, Jason Nguyen, right there, sitting right there. He's, uh, he invited me to a Zoe hangout. And that was also really fun. And another person by Melissa Hong. Oh, up there, up there, up there, sorry. Uh, she told me that I should join the worship team. And, and at the time, I thought, oh, I could probably go out the house more, and it would probably be good for the community and stuff. So I, I joined. And in hindsight, you can see God's work, goodness working throughout these people's life for my life. Um, worship and Zoe are some of like, the most important things in my life right now. And without it, I don't, I don't know where I'd be. But... Um, Going back on topic, joining worship and Zoe is only the start. Um, even though it got me back into church, I never went to church for God. It was only for community and just to get out of the house more. Um, fast forward two, three years, you can see a big, you see a big improvement. Um, God was using all these things to pull me back into church, but I definitely still was a label Christian. Um, yeah, I love doing worship, going to Zoe, going to church camp, serving the church, meeting a lot of good people. Outside of it, it might as well be, be a different person. Um, I learned a lot of lessons, but never really applied them. I did a, I did a lot of stuff, but it never reflected what would Jesus do. <laughs> um, up until Summer Youth Celebration 2023, also known as SYC 2023. Um, it's a week-long camp for us youngins, and it changed my life. Also, Tim is using my uh, testimony as SYC donation propaganda, so please donate, or else... I'm not going to get baptized, so please donate. Uh, anyways, during SYC, I was lucky enough to have a friend group that I hung out with all camp, and on top of that, I met a lot of good people there. Uh, there was also a lot of things I loved to do there, like worship, sports, a pool, breaking campus rules, and lastly, the sermons. Um, there was a sermon every morning and every night, and there was two sermons at night that really stood out to me. Uh, once, the first one is the second night, uh, I cried because of God's everlasting community in church. I remember hugging some of my friends and I started bawling my eyes out. Um, the first time I've done in like a really long time. And I was asking myself, how can God give me such a good community, such good friends and such good family, even though I disobeyed him so much and that I'm a sinner. And the power is, it's through his power's blood. It's through his blood. Uh... And the last night, I remember I was kneeling on stage with my friends with arms around the shoulders, and this is when I truly felt the presence of God. Uh, it was so overwhelming that I couldn't help but tear up. Uh, like a warm blanket, his love covers us all. 
And in that very moment, I decided to follow God for the rest of my life. Uh, there's scripture from Luke 15 that I really love. It's the parable of the prodigal son. You guys probably heard it before. Um, it's where a son leaves his loving father, taking a bunch of money, wasting it, and when he has nothing left, he, we read this. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was a still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Uh, sorry. Uh, but the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine who is dead is now alive again. He was lost and now is found. So they began to celebrate. Even though during COVID times, I didn't give an ounce of love, I give an ounce of effort to love him. On the other line, there was a whole vast ocean of love and goodness for me. I just need to see the world outside my window. You may have given up, but he hasn't, not even in the slightest. And guess what? He's never going to give up. And when you decide to come back to him, he doesn't hesitate to send an invite no matter how far you are. Like in the verse, there's a ring and a robe always ready for you in his estate. I used to think that baptism was the end goal and it was about being good enough or worthy enough. But it's not. It's like nowhere close. It's about the commitment of you, Je you and Jesus sticking it out together, pause, through thick and thin, living out what he would have done and giving him all the glory. And I'm all in. So today... Uh, not just me, but also the Baptists. We're ready to put on that ring in the robe, and we're ready to celebrate our new lives we found in Jesus. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's get ready for the dunking. So you can go, Baptists can go to the back here and just wait at the stage here. Uh, Matt, can you help with towels and stuff? Um, but yeah. I did them dirty. I, I told them to share their whole life story within five minutes, and that's, um, that's pretty hard. So go out of your way. Ask them about their life. Ask them questions. Dig deeper on things, and be blessed by them. Uh, we've been very blessed by these five today, just seeing how God's been working in each, each and every one of their lives. That, that's a, you get to look into a whole different universe of how good God is. Uh, let's bless them as we support them and Applause for them and cheer as, as they give their lives to Jesus. So first up, Stephen. Yeah. Check, check. Okay, Stephen, my brother. <laughs> Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Yes. And... Do you commit to following His way for the rest of your life with the help of God and the church? Yes. With, with that profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, Celine. All good, all good. Okay. Oh. Okay, Celine, do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Yes. And do you commit to following the way of Jesus for the rest of your life with the help of God and the church? Yes. Upon that profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Kartik. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he threatened us with a black bath bomb. He was like, I'll wear it. <laughs> Kartik, do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Yeah. <laughs> and do you commit to following the way of Jesus for the rest of your life with the help of God and the church? Yeah. Upon that profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Calvin, my brother, Hello. do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? I do. 
<laughs> and do you commit to following the way of Jesus for the rest of your life with the help of God and the church? I do. Upon that profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Josiah. Josiah, do you accept Jesus as Lord in your life? Yeah. <laughs> and do you commit to following his way of life for the rest of your life with the help of God in the church? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Upon that profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's pray. God, we thank you for that you are uh, on the throne of your own kingdom, making things happen all over, in places we're not even looking. And um, thank you that we get to celebrate and witness what you have done today, God. Let, us encourage, let, us, let it encourage us and push us towards you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, let's end with the Lord's Prayer. If we can all stand and we'll respond with this here. It goes like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, go in peace. Thank you for joining us today.